Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. We have been designing this post pagination for a blogger website for the last couple of videos. And I also showed you how to add this post pagination to your blogger website. And I had a comment asking me how to add reload to the post pagination. So here we can see when we click on the second page, we are taken to the second page over here. But we don't have any page reload happening over here. And when we click on the third page, we are taken to the third page. But the page is not being reloaded. So in this video, I'll show you how to add page reload to your post pagination. Now, as far as user experience is concerned, having less page reload can be a better user experience. But if you absolutely need to have the reload functionality in the post pagination, then you can watch this video. I'll show you how to add page reload to your post pagination. Now we'll be continuing from the code that we had written in the previous videos. So if you haven't watched them, you can watch them. I will leave the link in the description of this video. And I will also leave the link of the source code. So let's get started. All right, so this is the source code of our post pagination and this is the HTML. Let's go to the main.js file where we have all the functionality. So this is our code as of now and uh, when we click on any of these pages, that page is being displayed over here. But now we need to add reload to our post pagination. So let's see what are the changes we need to make in this uh, JavaScript file. Now when you're using JavaScript to add some functionality to your website, it is added to the client side of the website. So it is added to the browser. So whenever we refresh the page, all the data that we have in the variables will be deleted. Now in our case, when we reload the page, we want to store the information of the page numbers. So we have to keep note of which page number is the current page number. So for that, we'll be using local storage to store the contents even after the page load. Now when you create a local storage, it is stored in the browser. So even if you reload the page, the data will still be there. Now we will add the page number to a local storage in this add event listener over here. So here I'll just type local storage dot set item and we will name it page number and we will store the value of i because i is the index and it can be used as the page number. So let's type i over here. So here we are creating a local storage named page number and we are storing the value of i in that. So whenever we click on any of these uh, buttons, we will have a local storage created. And let me just comment this function call from here, activate page. And let me show it to you in the local storage. So I'll just right click over here and click on inspect. Now to see the values in the local storage, you have to go to application. And here we can see inside local storage, we have no values as of now. So let's click on one of these uh, page numbers. So let's click on the second page number. And we can see page number one is being displayed. So it starts from zero. So for the second page number, we have value one stored over here. And if you click on the third page number, we have the value two stored over here. And if you click on the first page number, we have the value zero stored over here. So this value will stay even if we refresh the page. So let's refresh this page. And we can see even after refreshing the page, the value is still there. So we can use this as the page number. All right, now the next thing we will do is we will remove the activate page function call from here. And we'll just add it outside. So here I'll just call the function activate page. And now for the page number, we have to provide the local storage value. So let's scroll up and here we'll create a variable. So let's type let and we'll just name it pn for page number. And let's type local storage dot get item. And here we'll type page number. Or so here we have created this variable and we are storing the value of the page number local storage to this pn. And we'll pass this value pn inside the activate page function. So here I'll just type pn. Now here we can see the third page is being displayed. So if you right click over here and go to inspect and go to application and local storage, here we can see the value two in the page number local storage. So that's why the third page is being displayed over here. All right now in the create pagination function, here after setting the local storage, we will reload the page. So for that you have to type location dot reload. All right now let's open the inspector and let's go to application and local storage. And now let's click on the first page number and we can see the value is changing to zero and we have the first page displayed over here. Now let's click on the second page and we have the second page displayed over here. And you can also see that when we click on any of these page numbers, the page is being reloaded. So we can see that the reload is working all right. Right now let's delete this local storage from here and uh, let's see what happens. So let's refresh this page. And here we can see we have an error. 
So it says cannot read property class list of undefined at line number 33. So let's go back. And if you go to the 33rd line number, here we can see we are accessing the page number and we are getting it from the function call. And here we can see we have the activate page function call and we have the PN value passed over here. And if you scroll up, we can see that the PN value is the local storage value of page number. But the problem is that we don't have any local storage as of now. So we can see there's no local storage over here. So when we don't have the local storage, we will have the error in our post pagination. So for that, we have to use an if condition and we have to see whether we have the local storage. And if we don't have the local storage, then we have to set the value of PN to zero by default. If you want, you can use an if condition for that, but I'll use a shortcut called conditional operator. So here's how it works. The first part over here is the condition. So we'll check whether the local storage is available. And if it's available, we can use the local storage. So for that, you have to type question mark. And there are two parts over here. So one is before the colon and one is after the colon. Now, if the condition is true, then what is before the colon will be executed. So we want to have the local storage stored. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here. And if the condition is not true, then we will add a value of zero. So here we can see we have the first page displayed over here. So this is how it works. This is the condition and we are checking whether we have this value available. And if the condition is true, then this part of the code will be executed. And if the condition is not true, then the second part of the code will be executed. So if you don't have the local storage, then the value zero will be added to the PN. So let's go to our uh, inspector. And here we can see we don't have any local storage as of now. But even then we have the first page displayed over here. So now let's click on the second page. And now we have the page number local storage stored over here. And we also have the second page displayed over here. And uh, the same goes with the third page and all the pages. Now we can also see that the page is being reloaded every time. All right now the last thing we will do is uh, we will remove the local storage as soon as the page is loaded. That's because if someone has viewed the third page number and if they close the website and if they visit the page once more, we can see when we reload the page, the third page will be displayed. So we don't want that to happen. We want the first page to be displayed whenever someone reloads the page. Now, if you want to keep this functionality, then you can leave the code as it is, but I'll show you how to remove the local storage as soon as the page is loaded. So for that, we'll scroll down and uh, in the activate page function, we will add a line of code and we'll type local storage dot remove item and here we'll type page number. So the page number local storage will be removed as soon as the page is loaded. And we can also remove window.scroll from here because uh, when the page is reloaded, it will automatically go to the top. So let's remove this. Let's also open the inspector. And here's the local storage. Let's click on the second page number. And we can see that the second page is being displayed and also the page is being reloaded. But uh, the local storage was added and it was removed. You can see that for a split second over here. We can see the local storage is being added and it is also being removed. And if you're in the third page and if you reload the page, you are taken back to the first page. So that's basically how you add reload functionality to your post pagination. All right, now the last thing we will do is we will add the updated code to our blogger website. We have already created this post. So let's view it. So here we have the pagination and we can see that everything is working all right. Now let's add the reload functionality to this uh, blogger website. So let's go to our dashboard and uh, let's go to theme. And uh, let's click on this arrow and click on edit HTML. We had already added the HTML, CSS and JavaScript in the previous video. So if you want to learn how to do that, you can watch the previous video. All right now let me go to the JavaScript. So it's all the way at the bottom. And uh, this is the JavaScript. So let's select all of this and uh, let's delete it. And let's add our new code. So let's copy all of this from here and uh, let's paste it over here and uh, let's click on save. All right now let's refresh this page and let's click on the second page number and we can see that we have a page reload and we are taken to the second page. Let's click on the third page number and we have reload and we are taken to the third page. Let's uh, reload this page and we are taken back to the first page. So that's how you can add page reload to your post pagination. Alright, so that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.